Tim Pool's movie of the year, Civil War, takes the top spot at the box office with a best ever opening for an A24, Studio A24, which is known for their lower budget and much more experimental films. Some are great, some are duds. I'm hearing a lot of bad things when it comes to Civil War in particular, and it's kind of funny to break down the demographics as to who went to go watch it because it's kind of exactly what you expect. Now, chances are you might have seen some marketing for this and you have no idea what it's about. I've only heard broad strokes about this from a couple of months back, but the story goes that yes, there's a civil war in the United States and Texas and California team up. It's like, all right, you've already surpassed my suspension of disbelief. There's no way I can take this seriously. But the fact that we're here, we're here in April and the winner of an opening weekend, or I'm sorry, the, we the winner on the weekend comes from a smaller studio and $25.7 million is the top spot. Kind of lets you know where Hollywood's at at this point in time. But A24 is calling Civil War had a $25.7 million opening, largely fueled by Democrat and liberal moviegoers. Yeah, you don't say. You don't say. We're probably trying to tie it to what QAnon in January 6th. But with over over the overperforming business in some red state regions like the south and southwest you know specifically where we where are we going with this one screen engine comscore post track poll civil war attendees poll or er, politics reporting that 22 considered themselves liberal 19 democrats 11 themselves moderate whereas registered republicans six percent evangelical christians six percent and politically conservative at five percent showed up as a minority a vast minority Markets that overperformed were Los Angeles, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, Austin, Navy Hub, San Diego, and conservative market Denver. Conservative Denver. Are you having a laugh? Then uh, there were smaller region mar or, uh, smaller regional markets that rallied, including El Paso and Waco. Okay, those are conservative hubs. Okay. Oklahoma City. Yeah, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, if you're trying to say anywhere in New Mexico or Virginia are conservative bastions, I got news for you. As we're told, oh, as we told you, South, South, Central, and West were the best regions for A24 release, which follows journalists chron er, chronicling a divided, violent America. Yeah, it's got Kirsten Dunst in the film for the first time, and literally, I can't remember the last time I've seen her on screen. Might have been, what, Marie Antoinette? Like it's been a long ass time. Rival Studios. Oh, concur with A24's projection that the Alex Garland movie this morning, which is uh, both the biggest opening ever for the filmmaker previously. Oh, yes. Previous being 2018's Annihilation in, oh, at $11 million. Never heard about that for the New York City based studio. After that, and yeah, 8.76 Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I don't really care about the rest of that stuff. I just want to take a look at the rest of Hollywood and what they're doing out here because brother it is absolutely abysmal all things considered like last weekend's big standout Godzilla X Kong the new empire something equally as stupid but don't uh, the fact that people are taking this up basically as a religion it's it's crazy man or the monster verse you just don't like it because it's fun and silly it's like no I hear that it's absolutely abysmal I've watched a couple of reviews on it I've heard a plot breakdown that made my brain flow out of my ear and in its third week it can only take home 15.4 million dollars dropping 50 percent all of those people that say oh it's just a fun popcorn film it's a blockbuster it's supposed to be stupid oh yeah jaws is supposed to be stupid too because it's a blockbuster et yeah it was supposed to be stupid the uh star wars the original trilogy yeah those are supposed to be stupid shall we continue the dark knight trilogy those are supposed to be dumb because they came out in the summer right the justification and the hoops that people will go to in order to defend their big lizard and giant monkey movie is insane like godzilla minus one was just in theaters and people were applauding how good that film was and then you want to go ahead and undercut all of that praise by just going yay the big lizard shoots the breath that's so great like holy shit you get what you deserve man and do you think and does hollywood think in general because okay I bet you they were probably hoping for maybe a little bit better of a turnout for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, but the fact that it might make $100 million domestically, perhaps, potentially, heading into its, you know, second month, but doesn't really look like it's all that great, losing, what, 500 theaters, 5.8 million on the, yeah, it's fourth weekend, eh, not great, Kung Fu Panda, 173 million, no, that's not bad, Dune Part 2, heading into its second month, $272.1 million domestically, yeah, for the people that thought that that was the greatest 
greatest film. Oh my god, it's literally the second coming of Two Towers. It's just as good, if not better, than The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, where's all of that talk about it being so great now? It'd be dominating. Nothing against the film here that it's tremendously well made, but just doesn't have cultural impact seven weeks after its release nobody's talking about it that it's still hanging around in the top five by simple virtue of there's no other competition that's out there just kind of reinforces the idea that everybody already came to that 2024 she gonna be a lean year man Hollywood has some soul searching to do but are they going to well, of course not because that would imply you had a soul to begin with but the 2024 global box office forecast up slightly uh, but still well below last year. It's going to be crazy because there's still quite a few high profile releases to come out. Obviously, I would say the biggest, uh, the two biggest ones that are on the sked, the two that are most likely to come up close to that billion dollar mark, which Dune 2 is supposed to be one of them. But as you're going to see, it's going to fall well short of that. But you have Despicable Me 4, which could, some of those other Despicable Me films, you know, got real close and surpassed a billion dollars. And then you had Deadpool and Wolverine, which even though it is rated R and it's going to be the only big budget superhero film, which in its waning relevance as a genre, and that'll be interesting to see, but it's so disassociated from everything else that Marvel is doing. It has a chance. I still see it capping out somewhere between 700 and 800 million, and I could be well overshooting that because it's all going to come down to word of mouth. And that's what a lot of the films coming out at least so far this year are completely and totally missing it's not something that's carrying over to what's going on on the smaller screen there's something that i'm going to be talking about the next couple of days that's really bucking that trend which harkens back to another thing that's going to be coming out in a couple months time but i don't want to spoil that video but big budget hollywood they're in tough right now i'm d oh Yes, time to this year's CinemaCon. Analytics from Goyer Street released an updated forecast for the global box office that predicts revenues will be stronger than originally expected for 2024. Goyer Street uh, is projecting theatrical revenues this year to hit 33 or 32.3 billion dollars, up from 31.5 billion they originally forecasted. So, did they factor in that Argyle was going to be such a tremendous disaster? Madam Web was going to be an even worse bomb than they originally forecasted or did dune falling completely and totally within its projections ended up raising their overall enthusiasm for the year like what's leading them to this conclusion it's still below the 33.9 billion earned worldwide the last year and the 10 billion below the box office peak of 42.3 billion hit pre-pandemic so that would be if my math serves me correctly what 2022 God, that seems like a lifetime away especially in Hollywood. Goer said, is it Goer or Goyer? I'm going to go with Goer now. Uh, said the international market, excluding China, will account for most of the gains. Yeah, we're kind of seeing that, which is also bad because you remember the way that the box office breaks down. Studios get 50%. They get 50% of the domestic box office, okay? But when it comes to international, outside of China, where they only get 25%, they get 40%, and in some markets, it's even worse than that. So the fact that more money is being made abroad, not that great. Not that great in the grand scheme of things, but I'll continue with box office projections set to come in at $550 million ahead of their original forecast of $16.2 billion. Domestic box office is also expected to come in $200 million above the initial pro uh, prognosis at, uh, at around eight. Point two billion. China, the only mar uh, the only one of the three key markets forecast to show year-on-year -year growth compared to 2023, is expected to earn 7.9 billion on par with earlier estimates. Or said changes to the release calendar since its first projection, with more titles being added. Where and of what quality are we expecting were the main reason for the increase. Right, right. They noted the box office bump will actually be higher calculated in local currency. But the strong US dollar, I'm sorry, the strong US dollar? Where have you been? Has essentially wiped out over a third of the gains seen collectively across international markets. International markets that just aren't turning out for your Western slop. And the new figures will come as little consolidation for hard hit distributors. Yeah, even as forecasts, uh, improved forecasts, Goer expects global box offices here to fall 5% for 2023. Oh, the first post pandemic year on year drop. Oh, darn. And that 2024 revised estimates is still 18% below the average of the last three pre pandemic years from 2017 through 2019. Goer Street attributes year on year drop to Hollywood's historical dual labor, yeah, labor strikes, which results 
resulted in production slowdown and the delay in the release of several big titles this year. Oh yeah, no, that's definitely to blame in this situation, mostly because it was the dumbest thing that Hollywood could have done. A lot of people knew it, a lot of people seen it coming, and now you're reaping the results of that, and congratulations, your already dwindling business is further contracting. And while they were super optimistic, and hey guys, more things are getting added to the schedule, that just means for a bigger opportunity for more things to bomb. I think there's going to be a lot of eyes. There's going to be a lot of eyes because there's a decent amount of goodwill being put towards the Deadpool film that's coming out. But if that if that follows recent Marvel trajectory and not showing that there is still signs of life in the genre, I think you're going to see full on pants on fire for Hollywood. And well, let's just hope the Warner Brothers and Legendary can uh, quickly turn around another Godzilla Kong in order to make up for lost revenue. So with all that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.